Why do some people think that Pakistan's stability is in India's best interest? Well, because it is. It's in everybody's best interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inclu especially yeah, Pakistan's special. neighbors. Yeah. Right? Especially. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the question follows. The terrorism in India was worse 10 years back when Pakistan was stable with a strong army, while today cross-border terrorism and skirmishes uh, have significantly reduced in India, while Pakistan is having multiple problems. Um, okay, but that's not we, because Pakistan is not yet a, a failed state. We're talking about a failed state situation, right? Right. Um, and just first of all, understand that correlation is not always causation. One, so that's important to always remember. You can be like, it was, you know, back then it was like this. We had that. Now that we have like this, it's like that. So this means that this cause. Um, we're talking about Pakistan. When we're talking about instability in Pakistan, we're not talking about instability as you're seeing it right now. We're saying that what we're seeing right now um, could potentially lead to situations where we have an actual failed state, like a state right. that um, you don't have a functioning, you don't have law and order. And basically things just, and that is a situation where things get, you know, actually, I potentially you could think if you draw the graph on this um, stability, it could go down and then up. So if you like look at terrorist attacks on neighbors, if you have a lot of stability, then Pakistan's military might even assist terrorist attacks, which it does. Right. So you have a high level of uh, terrorist activities on its neighbors, in, mainly India. And then when you have instability, somewhat instability, you could have more of these uh, problems be focused internally because, you know, you have the terrorists are more involved in focusing on their own attacks on, the, you know, competitors or the military or the civil um, government. But so it goes down attacks on neighbors will go down. But then we have a situation where things actually break apart and there is no control over what's happening then you can right. see that coming out and just dr uh, um attacks on iran attacks on in Af afghanistan or or the other way actually over there but mainly also on india right you could you get a lot of terrorist groups over there that there's no oversight over them anymore there's no control over them anymore and these terrorist activities would come out and they want they might want to make a name for themselves and the best way to make a name for yourself is to attack on to attack you know india because and you know you could have you know hundreds of different terrorist groups coming out of pakistan um new ones with the fall of pakistan that all of them are competing to be known and recruit people mm -hmm. um and the best one of the best way to recruit yourself is to do attacks that Many many radical Muslims would be celebrating, you know, like, oh, that was a, that was a beautiful job. I want to join you, right? So, yeah, you're gonna get, you know. So that's the that's what that the fear is. What do you think? Yeah, and I I mean, sign off on on you know pretty much all of that too. But I, I would also say something that you know you always do a really good job of trying to express to people, which is things like it is always in the world's best interest for nations to not be failed states. It is yeah. always a good thing when China as a nation is doing well, not necessarily the CCP, right? Mm -hmm. The Russian people, the Russian economy, not necessarily Vladimir Putin and the, the crap policies, right? And that that's an important thing for us always to, to keep in mind that it's like, yeah, we may disagree with a lot of the things that are going on in Pakistan. We may disagree with a lot of the freaking policies. Like, of course, absolutely. It's very easy, in my opinion, to pick out the bad ones. But to say, hey, therefore, what we should hope for is that essentially the entire country goes into such levels of despair and poverty that people are murdering each other in the street. That's obviously bad for the whole world, guys. That's obviously yeah. not a good thing. So, but yeah. Yeah. Um, t yeah. Basically, it's pretty close to guaranteed that you're going to have a bad time if you have a failed state as your neighbor. 
Yeah. You having a failed state as your yeah. neighbor, it's almost guaranteed to be not a good time. Not especially good if they, uh, especially if they have those uh, those nuclear warheads and whatnot. Mm. It's a, yeah. A little, add a little cherry, I guess. So. Don't want that. You don't want yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Indians wish the best for Pakistan. Seriously. <laughs> you know? yeah. Seriously. Rub that yeah. Shiva linga as much as you have to. <laughs> you got it. It took, it, it took you a second. It took you a second. I was like, "Come on, he's getting. He's gotta. He's gotta." Get oh my god, I, Shiva needs to have its own Me Too moment. Seriously, <laughs> right, uh, right. Shiva is like, "This was a bad idea to have my genitals in every consented. household around." Him. I never, I never consented. consented to be constantly. I've never consented to constantly being rubbed, guys. I've never consented to <laughs> for Shiva. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I I, uh, I you know, set my dick on fire once now. <laughs> one, one time, and you guys <laughs> gotta go. Oh, <laughs> uh, no man is saying best of luck, Pakistan. Oh, mm, can go. Yeah. See, you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.